look at this guy. Did you get a fish? <laughs> this is how they hike on Instagram. Is it, it makes a really good place to hide if you're a fugitive. And about 20 years ago, this is where Eric Rudolph hit out. Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we're... Hold on. Hello? Hello, Candy Adventures. It's our manager. I am looking at the numbers. Yes, we've seen the numbers. Not good. Yeah, it's not great for a channel that's been up for four years. But 10 out of 10... No, I know it's not looking good. I understand it's not looking good. The worst. Have you thought about quitting? Yes, of course we've thought about quitting. Who hasn't? All of our viewers are probably thinking, why don't they quit? You sound just like my stepdad. I am looking out for you. He would love you, you sound just like my stepdad. Calm down. Google algorithm doesn't like you. I know. But I do. I know, we needed to hear it. It seems like Kara and Nate can basically it in a bucket and post it on the internet and get sponsored by Google and given free tours and Airbnbs all over planet Earth while we're out here struggle bussing to get 600 views on a video. Are you quitting? No, we're not gonna quit. Are you quitting? Just because we're rock bottom doesn't mean we will ever quit. I'd we're rather just... die than withdraw. We're gonna keep our chin up and your check's gonna be a little late. Let's get into the video. That's our manager. He likes to keep a uh, check on us. And as you, if you ever look at our analytics on our page, um, you can see that our subscriber count does not grow very fast. It's been four years on YouTube. And we ask ourselves sometimes, should we keep going or should we quit? Because everybody that we know personally says that we should quit. Everybody, or if they don't say it, they're thinking it and you know that they're thinking it, but they're not saying it. So in that fun light, <laughs> we're gonna head out on this lake today and we are going to try to catch something different today. We're going to try to catch a uh, salamander because... Western North Carolina is the number one hotspot in the world for salamanders. So we're going to get out on our little boat and we're going to head out here and see if we can catch some to show to you. And maybe try to catch a fish too, who knows. We're just going to explore, go find a waterfall and get out on this lake. You can almost beach it. That's cold. That is not refreshing. That is cold water. <laughs> and it is August. What's the average temp here? Like 75? Yeah. Even though this is the southeast, this place feels like it's in Canada or something. Uh, with uh, the way the temperature, yeah, it's, it hasn't been over maybe 75 since we've been here the last few days. Fun fact, when you look around and see how dense uh, all this vegetation is and like it's almost impenetrable and you can't you can't even hardly see through it, uh, let alone walk in it, uh, is it, was, it makes a really good place to hide if you're a fugitive. And about 20 years ago, this is where Eric Rudolph hit out. The North Carolina mountains, ground zero for the largest, most expensive fugitive search in United States history. The arrest ended the five-year manhunt in the same town Rudolph built the Olympics bombs, the bombs he planted outside an Atlanta nightclub, and the two bombs detonated outside this Atlanta abortion clinic. And they couldn't catch him for a long time because it's so dense, it's so hard to see see in here somebody could be hiding right there and you wouldn't see him so he'd kill wild game eat salamanders and fish from the rivers in the mountains so could sasquatch <laughs> so anyway fun fact have there been squatch sightings here yes there have been squatch sightings here not by me but i have heard of squatch sightings here and that would be a really cool video series i'd like to get into as well just an excuse to go walk around in the woods and camp but, which is the same thing we use fishing for just an excuse to go outside and film all right, Mona, you want to go look for salamanders? That was loud. Let's go. Okay. 
All right, so the cool thing about where we're going is there's a waterfall, but the only way to get to that waterfall is by boat, which is kind of the theme we're doing. The cabin we're at, we're, we boat into it. The waterfall we're going to, we're boating into it. So it's a really cool little waterfall that a lot of people don't know about. This is how they hike on Instagram. <laughs> so this, this little pure virgin river here comes out of a waterfall that we're headed towards. And we're hoping in these pools below the waterfall, Elizabeth can get all of her nerd bio biology out and we can find a salamander. Okay, so some success. We found a, a very small one here, but at least we're, we're on the right track. To me, with a lot of things in biology, from birds to lizards, a lot of things, you know, they say there's a million different species or whatever, but a lot of them are just seemingly mild color variations. So this is, to me, just a salamander. I don't know. Hopefully we can find some more, and hopefully we can find some bigger ones so that you can see them a little better. Let's keep looking around this pretty little creek. I wet my hand when I touch them too, just because their body's wet and I'm not trying to dry them out and get that slime all, get the slime off of them. So kind of like a trout. I like to keep a moist hand when I'm in the wilderness. Specifically with catching salamanders, you do want wet hands because at least in North Carolina, 90% of these salamanders are lungless and they breathe through their skin and mucous membrane. So you don't want to get bug spray on it or wipe off that coating. So you want to keep them near the water, in the water, with a wet hand. All right, so we're getting close to the waterfall. And it looks like Elizabeth may have gotten one. We're moving up on the size chart here. Whoa. Look at that guy. A lot of these salamanders are hard to identify down to like a species because they all look very similar. They're brown, orange, they're kind of black with some stripes or some spots. Um, and because there's so many species in the same area, you have to be an expert to really narrow it down. But maybe we can find a common one that is uh, starkly different than the others. But regardless, we're catching salamanders no matter what kind they are. these salamanders are going to be uh, purely aquatic or only found in the water. They still need a moist environment, but you can find a lot of them on the side in little burrows or under uh, logs or leaf litter. So this one was out of the water just in this little patch of moss. I think I found someone's geocache. If you've never done geocaching before, people will hide things at specific coordinates and it's kind of like treasure hunting. I didn't do it on purpose, but it's very well marked. Some little trinket that people find. Um, so I guess there's probably more if this is marked as a two, but kind of cool that people are geocaching in this area.
We've gone approximately eight miles from that cabin that we're staying in up this very windy river and found some nice grass beds and it's a little more shallow so I think this is where we're going to try out our crickets and Chris is going to do some fly fishing right off the boat. The downside to our boat specifically, there's a lot of pros and cons to our boat but a con is it's not really made for shallow river water because we can't really mount a trolling motor on it. I mean we can but it would be really difficult. So it's a lot of forward, neutral, forward, neutral, and it makes a lot of noise, but uh, we're gonna still try it out anyway. Well, that's about as far as we can go with this boat. This lake has turned into a river. So we got out to do a little fishing and we found a brightly colored newt, it looks like. So the salamandering continued. Look at this guy. Chris just found this at his feet when he was casting. And this is a red spotted newt. This is called an eft, which is a juvenile and they're bright red. And then when they turn into adults, they're actually a dark green and yellow. And the adults are aquatic and will breed and live in water. And the Fs are more land-based. Did you get a fish? Right. Check out this pretty little rainbow. Wow. Whoa, the colors are so pretty. Really pretty colors, really fat fish. I'm gonna let this one go. Wow. We just did a catch and cook yesterday with these, but just wanna show this really pretty fish while we're out here looking for salamanders. I'm still gonna be trying to fish, so really pretty colors on this thing. Beautiful. But gonna put him back, really pretty rainbow though. There you go. pretty far up this river and Beans is of course waiting with us and she's gotten a little cold so I think we're gonna head back and it's starting to lose some of the light in the day and I still got a bucket of crickets in here that I want to catch a lake-based fish because uh, <laughs> we caught them we've been catching them in the river but nothing lake-based yet so maybe we can get on something in the lake before the day's over you can see we uh, heavily favor trout fishing just but like in Guam with the jungle perch Anytime you're just wading around in a river, to me, is the most relaxing, fun fishing in the world. Um, more than trolling in the ocean or fishing in a lake or bottom fishing in the ocean. Uh, something about uh, just wading through rivers and fishing is uh, the most fun to me, most relaxing. You're more connected to the water and to the land when you're not separated by a boat. Way less complicated. You can <laughs> cast where true. you want, you can walk where you want. I just enjoy it, it's more relaxing to me. Get hung up in a tree, just walk over and go untangle it real quick. You get some exercise, hiking. <laughs> but this, uh, these, this stream is very cold. Very cold and very slippery. So right now we're just floating back down this river that we drove up. It's super quiet. So we're just enjoying the silence and moving slowly back out through this and trying not to get our boat stuck on all of these rocks because it's less than two feet deep.
All right, so as per usual, uh, we didn't catch anything. And the, well, we did. Well, we caught uh, rainbow trout, and we caught a bunch of little salamanders. Um, but we wanted to catch a, a lake fish for a catch and cook. That don't look like it's happening, and it's starting to rain. We're running out of time, so I think we're going to cheat and go to a little <laughs> restaurant that you can, again, our theme of this last few videos is stuff you can boat to. So there's actually a little restaurant up here that you can uh, get to by boat, and we're going to go up there and I think just uh, enjoy their, their food. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the house and get changed and get all nice and go to dinner. Yep. Hopefully beat this rain and get out of here and we'll see you guys in just a second. Wow. That's 60 horsepower. 60 American horsepower. Well, what? the motor's actually made in China through a subsidiary of Tohatsu, which is a Japanese brand. That's 60 American horsepower to me, damn it. It's real to me, damn it. It's still real to me, damn it. This is our new prop. She got to get up and go. We got changed. I'm one of my three long sleeve shirts that I own. They all say Guam on them. <laughs> uh, it looks like I got a rain cloud coming in and we're gonna head to this boat in restaurant. So uh, we'll turn the camera around and show you just how close it is in the middle of these mountains and the dock is right up against the restaurant. So let's go. Let's go check it out. We are approaching the restaurant in this cove. So you can see that the dock is right here and the restaurant is right up on the shore. So we're gonna find a slip and walk up. We'll get some Velveeta. There's no Velveeta. It's yellow. Can't fish without Velveeta? We just finished our lovely bottomless fried fish dinner without Velveeta, but it was still good. And we are leaving in the pouring rain. So overall, a very good day, even though it's a little wet. We finally get to show you on camera how wet it is in this region of North Carolina. But you can see the smoke on the mountains right across the lake, which is beautiful. So I think uh, that's it for this video. We are going to sign off and see you next time. We appreciate you watching. And uh, thank you to all the donors, Patreon and PayPal, and people that order the merch. We're going towards this channel moving forward, just a little bit at a time. So have a good day.